This month on Living Golf, we look back at the year in the game from four great golfing locations. We go for a ride on Lake Nona with golf's most famous trophy and the man who won it, Henrik Stenson. Now it's more about trying to make that Claire Jug not feel lonely in that trophy cabinet and trying to bring home a friend or two. At Skibo Castle, we reflect on the big stories of 2016 with renowned golf journalist John Huggan. He had enormous charisma. He was the, the man that every man wanted to be and he was the, the man that every woman wanted to be with. I mean, he was perfect. We get the thoughts of eight-time major champion Tom Watson as he surveys his latest course design in the Surrey countryside. All you want the golf course to be is a golf course on which when the golfer finishes the round of golf, that golfer wants to go back and play it again and again and again. And with 2016 almost over, we visit Dornoch, which this year is celebrating 400 years of the game being played there. Scotland is the home of golf for good reason, boasting some of the finest courses anywhere in the world. Now, while the likes of St. Andrews, Turnbury and Muirfield tend to generate bigger headlines, if you happen to travel further north towards the Scottish Highlands, you are going to come across some classics that are just as easy on the eye. Welcome to Skibo Castle. Renovated by one of the great industrialists of the 19th century, Andrew Carnegie, the castle is the focal point of one of the best estates in Scotland. The Carnegie Links lies within the 7,500 acre grounds. It may be one of the newest links courses in Scotland, but it looks like it's been here for centuries. The last three holes are said to be amongst the best finishing stretches in golf. I've been joined for a round with the director of golf here, David Thompson, who helped redesign the course, and renowned journalist John Huggan, to find out more about golf at Carnegie and to reflect on the year in the professional game. David, how do you like to describe the Carnegie Club here at Skibo? Golf course is a serious test. It's, it's not a resort golf course. You know, this is a, a, a real championship course. Um, I like you to use your imagination. It's, it's not about bombing it and firing balls at pins. It's really just being creative. You know, true links golf, you know, the way it should be played. Our weather generally is better than the rest of the country. You know, we're, I think it's the second driest part of Britain. We don't get any snow, so we're pretty lucky. You know, you get golf for 12 months of the year. John, let's start with the first major of the year. Big surprise at the Masters. Jordan Spieth's implosion on the back nine, having looked bulletproof, and then Danny Willett took his opportunity and scored a sensational victory. Mm, well, absolutely. I mean, it was a great surprise, uh, particularly to our American friends who d didn't really know who Danny Willett was, despite the fact that he, he was number 12 in the world when he arrived at Augusta. Certainly, um, as you say, he took his chance when it came. And it was kind of the first cracks in the veneer of Jordan Speed's game. It was the first hint of it was the 10, 11, 12 on the back nine on Sunday. And that continued really for him for the rest of the year. Dustin Johnson finally delivered on the talent. You know, he, he will win more just by doing what he does. He's the most unique player, I think, in the sense that he doesn't get too worked up about anything. That showed only too clearly at the US Open. Moving on to the Open Championship at Royal Troon, did you anticipate the classic showdown that was eventually delivered? Well, I don't think anybody would anticipate something on, on that level, and especially on that golf course. I mean, it's one of the most difficult members of the Open Championship rota. I mean, they, they tore it apart. Did you have Jimmy Walker down as a major champion? Yes, in the big picture. I mean, he certainly got the game to win a major championship, but I didn't see him winning the PGA because he was in the midst of a you know, a dreadful run, to be honest. So no, I wasn't surprised to see him win, but yes, I was surprised to see him win this one. The Ryder Cup went America's way, so they stopped the rot the task force delivered. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world for America to have won this Ryder Cup. It will peak interest for France, which maybe wouldn't have been the case had Europe won again. I think America were almost getting tired of losing, and I think the, the bottom line was that America had a slightly better team than Europe did this year. 
2016 saw one of the great spokesmen and ambassadors for the game pass away, the late great Arnold Palmer. You can make a very good case that Arnold was the most significant figure ever in the history of professional golf. He had enormous charisma, he was the, the man that every man wanted to be and he was the, the man that every woman wanted to be with. I mean, he was perfect, he was absolutely perfect. There aren't enough good words to say about Arnold Palmer, it's as simple as that. Wow, what a great course and a privilege to play it and great company too. And as John already mentioned, the performance of the year undoubtedly has to be Henrik Stenson in winning the Open Championship at Royal Troon back in July. Now, we met up recently with the Swede at his home in Florida to reminisce on his first major triumph. At his home on Lake Nona, Henrik takes time out from a busy golfing year with his wife and children. What better way than jet skiing to get your mind off the game for a while? We've been here permanently now for almost four years, so um, yeah, this is where home is. Uh, my kids go to school here in Orlando and uh, we spend about 10 months out of the year uh, here at Lake Nona. And summertime, uh, when, when school's finished, the family base themselves in Sweden for, for about two months and I play a bit more in Europe and get the odd week off back home in Sweden. For years, Stenson was seen as golf's nearly man. Despite close to 20 professional victories and seven top five finishes in major championships, doubts remained as to whether he could deliver on the grandest of stages. That all changed in the Open at Royal Troon. I've always wanted to win this championship ever since I was 11, 12 years old and started playing this game. It was one of the first golf tournaments I watched on television, so uh, I guess I, d I didn't need to have a motivational speech uh, to myself. It was more about uh, a little look in the mirror and, you know, just, this is the time, this is when we need to go out there and play our, our best round and, and make it happen, and uh, I guess the rest is history. After three rounds, Stenson was on 12 under. Phil Mickelson, his closest challenger, was one shot behind. Their final day duel would go down as one of the greatest in golf. It was one of those really nice matches or duels where two players are throwing punches at, at each other and, and because of that the level of golf got just better and better. So it, it was no one who lost it at, at any occasion. It was just someone, it was their week and uh, luckily this time it was mine. Stenson would shoot a 63 to Mickelson's 65 to win by three. His 20 under par total of 264 is the lowest 72 hole score in a major. Well, when I came off that 18th, if you would ask me how many birdies I made or what score I shot, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I was just doing the best I could at every single shot and, and just marched on to the next one. I, I, uh, I was a man on a mission. Unsurprisingly, the Open winner's trophy, the Claret Jug, takes pride of place in the Stenson household. <laughs> Well, this is uh, where it's being uh, kept quite often. Everyone can see it. I see it in the morning if I have breakfast. Give it a little smile. Yeah, it's just nice. See it every day. Henrik turned 40 this year, and with so many 20-somethings dominating the game, it could be easy to wind down now that he's finally a major champion. But he thinks there's more to come. I still feel like a young 40. Uh, I'm trying to stay in decent shape. I would hope I got another four or five years on, on top of my game and uh, that means another 15, 20 times uh, I'll tee it up in the major championships and I fancy my chances I can make it more than one. Now Henrik is known to have quite an offbeat sense of humour. and We're not sure many Open champions would take the Claret Jog out for a spin like this. With or without winning the Open, I would have been very happy with, with what I've achieved on the golf course, but it, it was the icing on the cake. It, it was the one thing that kind of made me feel like it's, it's a complete career. Now it's more about trying to make that Claire Jug not feel lonely in that trophy cabinet and trying to uh, bring home a friend or two to it. While Stenson looks after the Claret Jug in his inimitable way, CNN Digital studies some of the stranger things that have happened to sport's most famous trophies down the years. For more, go to cnn.com slash golf.